All right, I've left all the hyperbole at the title. From here on in, we're gonna take a look at what I believe to be, give or take a few skill points and attachments, depending on your preference, the all around best build in the game for Payday 3 at launch. Now, before I go any further, a few caveats. One, Payday 3 is not as demanding a game as Payday 2 was in terms of build and meta obedience. You can succeed on overkill difficulty with no build, never mind the best build, so don't stress this too much. Also, there are plenty of very team oriented skills you might want to consider if you're playing in a full squad of heisters who each know their role. The manipulator, engineer and tactician lines are all excellent, although best ran by one member of the team. Finally, I promise I'm getting into the build in just a second. Please give me your honest feedback on this setup with areas and heists where it struggled, preferences you found or just genuine critique. It's the best way for all of us to learn this early into the game's life cycle, especially when certain heists in Payday 3 actually cater towards specific playstyles and skills better than others. That said, let's get directly into the build, starting with its almighty weapon. This is the VF7S, the SCAR or Eagle Heavy Rifle, for those of you in the know, and ever since I purchased its preset variant, the Featherlight, I knew I was onto something special. Despite a good 80% of the primary arsenal in the game being viable on overkill difficulty, the VF7S is a cut above. If you can handle its recoil and kick, it is such an uncomparable fully auto powerhouse even at weapon level 1, and it only gets better from there. This thing can one-shot every single enemy type except shields and dozers within the skill build I'm about to showcase, and as you'll soon find out from these skill choices, my version of the Scar is decked out specifically to target its hipfire capabilities, allowing me to build it in a very uniquely powerful way. For attachments, first I go for the sheath RDS sight, which is my favourite red dot when occasionally ADSing. The hybrid muzzle brake, which reduces both vertical and horizontal recoil at the cost of targeting speed that we don't even care about. The range barrel, which buffs our damage over range, again impacting less important stats. The biofit grip for improved vertical recoil control at the cost of a little nerf to horizontal recoil. The extended mag bringing us up to 30 rounds instead of 20. The TQ stock for even more weapon control without needing to ADS. And the cylinder grip which trades useful stats like hip fire spread for less useful ones like targeting speed. In all that leaves us with a weapon that excels in all categories bar handling and fire rate, both of which being hugely unimportant for this build as we don't plan to ADS, switch it out or go fully auto very often. I've gone back and forth on this build secondary quite a bit in testing, I think the Castigo and Bison revolvers are good choices, retaining their one-shot capabilities in this build too. But, seeing as Payday 3 rewards hybrid stealth playstyles slightly more, allowing you to cut corners by initially stealthing, I wanted something in the secondary slot that could be silenced, so I've chosen to go with the Strike 7, a high capacity and fire rate pistol. I don't think this is the best secondary in the game, but I think it augments this build better than the revolvers, so that's why it made the cut. We run this thing with the extended mag attachment, bringing it up to a massive 31 round mag, the obelisk silencer which sacrifices damage distance, a stat we don't really care much for for our pistol, the box RDS for free recoil stats, and the grain grip for the same reason. This weapon is surprisingly effective at close range and sets itself apart from the VF7S by being a more spammy secondary option, whereas the revolvers do much the same thing as it. Our overkill weapon is of course the almighty HET-5 Red Fox, and our armor lining is the Heavy Ballistic, as four plates are well worth reduced movement speed and down chances. Our deployable is of course the armor bag, the best in the game right now with how armor is balanced at the moment, alongside the smoke grenade to assist in certain objectives and escapes, as well as the infrasonic mine or motion sensor depending on the heist. The mine is a useful stunning tool for defensive objectives, whilst the motion sensor effectively gives you brief wall hacks for a much needed heads up against cloakers. Finally, we're on to skills, and this build is generally a grit and edge focused setup designed around buffing the scar as much as possible. We start off in the medic tree though, aiming for one of the most underrated skills in the game. After picking up medic ace for a slightly faster revive time, and to gain automatic grit upon reviving, we grab combat medic, a skill that grants you and the teammate you revived 5 entire seconds of full damage immunity. This is swan song all over again, and well worth taking as a clutch skill to save most situations. Moving on to Moa, this skill is our first provider of edge, although it's predominantly a bridge to get you up to recoil handling, and most importantly, ammo funnel and replenish. Now not only will you have even less kick on your weapon, for every kill you pick up you'll automatically grab their ammo box and add it directly into your active magazine. This is insanely powerful in so many different builds and is quickly becoming a skill combo I can't do without. Sadly, it won't activate the very powerful plate up skill, meaning I do choose to miss out on that regeneration for this specific build, which stings a bit. 
Moving down to tank, probably the best skill line in the game right now, we basic it out before grabbing extra plates for the armor bag and armor up to increase its effectiveness. I think this is the most necessary skill in the game, and on harder difficulties, if you're not running it, you're just making your team's life harder. Unfortunately, we are forced into Sharpshooter next, which counteracts the Gunslinger playstyle I'm going for later, but that's just to ensure we can pick up the Cutting Shot skill, nullifying those pesky heavy SWAT spawns that come later into the Assault, allowing you to still one-shot headshot them with just the Scar. I put a spare point into Swift for a little movement speed. I'm still split on if you're better going for Swift or Infiltrator here, but Swift has won out in this build as I don't plan to do much stealth. Moving down to Enforcer, we grab the first skill as another way to activate Grit, with close range skills playing into the hipfire style, and with both Grit and Edge now available, I like to go for Quick Reload and Combat Reload, just to ensure that I'm never without Grit or Edge the second I've got them activated. In Manipulator, I do like having Master Trader on most of my high difficulty builds, it means you only need to trade 4 hostages at the start of the heist, and from then on, your first teammate to go into custody will only spend 10 seconds in prison, meaning it's sometimes a nice way to actually replenish some armour. This is a huge utility skill, but still something you can consider dropping if you're running in a squad that doesn't go down very often. This build's final skills go into Gunslinger, with Gunslinger Ace giving it an incredibly easy source of edge, only requiring me to switch weapons to activate. I ace it out just because I like to be able to reset edge more frequently via hipfire headshots instead of purely relying on grit and combat reload, as I found this allows me to be even more aggressive in my play. From the hip is a crucial skill, being the main reason why we never have to aim down sights with the VF7S, as it massively tightens its hipfire spread, and heavy hipfire is the MVP you didn't even know about, allowing you to stagger shields instantly, giving you immediate access to their heads. I find that shields are probably the strongest counters to Gunslinger builds, so make sure you pick this skill up to level the playing field. That is a full 21 skill point build, requiring level 100, and is of course for all difficulties up to and including overkill. All the gameplay you're going to see is going to be on overkill difficulty, and I'm currently showing the order in which I like to pick up these skills if you're still in the leveling process. Heading into some gameplay, you can immediately see why this build is so bloody powerful. We can one-shot everything in our path without batting an eyelid, providing a perfect high kill focal point for the team to make room for everyone else. I'm not kidding when I say this setup can take out basically every spawning SWAT on the map with zero assistance. Essentially, the way I play the SCAR is like a pseudo semi-automatic weapon, single firing it for the most part to ensure my spread stays tight and I'm only hitting headshots. If you play it like this, it becomes an insanely ammo efficient weapon, easily going positive with the ammo funnel and replenish playstyle. Even when hip fired, this gun feels amazing due to being able to pour virtually all of our stats into keeping its kick to a minimum turning it into this completely lethal laser beam that never runs out of ammo. Even better, this build actually has some team play elements to it, turning you to an able squad doctor thanks to the medic skills and with that simple single point investment in Manipulator. Grit and Edge are exceptionally easy to maintain at the moment, meaning you should have almost 100% uptime on both during the Assault Wave. Even with all that in mind, you still can't play too aggressively, especially on overkill simply due to the nature of the new armor system. Damage taken is semi-permanent, so despite being a hip-firing cowboy, do move around cover wherever possible. I would love to be able to fit plate up into this build to enable more aggression, but its negative synergy with replenish really stings that potential viability. Also, if you are tinkering with this build, I'd seriously recommend you stray away from any skill that uses up your stack of edge. Edge is so essential in making half the skills in this build active, so there's no way the benefit of any edge consuming skill is worth it in my eyes. I think if I were to encourage experimentation anywhere, I'd maybe consider adding a few hybrid skills like Hacker and Infiltrator, as there are a few luxuries you can happily look to drop in exchange for further viability and stealth, making this build all around stronger, if slightly weaker in loud specifically. I also want to show off heavy hipfire in action, stun effects in Payday 3 are so much more powerful than ever before, and this one is no different, allowing you to be a little less accurate firing into crowds, but still go unharmed due to the SWAT's recoiling. Its primary usage though, as I mentioned, is to take care of those pesky shields, who are up there with the dozers in terms of problematic enemy types right now. As you can see, just threading a single shot through the visor panel is enough to force them into their stunned animation, exposing their heads for longer than a full second, giving you more than enough time to finish them off, or just hold them stunned until someone else picks up the pieces for you. A seriously underrated skill. Also keep in mind, whilst ADSing is discouraged as it will immediately remove the stack of edge you have, making your weapons instantly weaker, if you are able to stand still for 1.5 seconds afterwards, Sharpshooter will replenish the stack, meaning you can still use this thing ADS from time to time if the situation calls for it, or you need to go sniper hunting. 
My final tip when using this build is to keep your eyes on your loaded ammo pool, as you'll want to make sure you reload before it gets down to zero, because combat reload only works on mags that still retain some ammo. As you start to master the timing on this, and that 20 second skill duration aligns itself with your internal clock, you'll have endless uptime on all the best skills in the game, and will be carrying teams through overkill difficulty heists at the drop of a hat. Trust me, this ain't no 2020 best build, this is the real deal. All that said, thank you so much for watching. If you're keen to pick up and play Payday 3 now the servers appear to be on the mend, but don't have a way to do so currently, check out my range of Apex Gaming PCs, as they have been confirmed to handle Payday 3 quite nicely. Take care, enjoy this setup, share your own creative builds with me, and I'll see you all in the next video. A huge thank you to my dedicated Patreon backers. If you want to join this crew in Going Infamous, check out the link below and pledge as little as $2 to see your name in the credits, or get 24-hour early access to future videos and vote on upcoming content. Take care, I'll see you all soon.